Good afternoon, Voting Village. Uh, my name is Forrest Senti. I'm the Director of Business and Government Affairs at the National Cyber Security Center. And I'm Maddie Gullickson, and I'm the Program Manager for Secure the Vote. We'd like to thank all of you for having us here today. We're excited to have our presentation accepted to the Voting Village. We look forward to future years and our work in elections. Um, so we're with the National Cyber Security Center. We're a 501c3 based out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, we were founded in 2016, and a lot of our big focus has to do with cyber innovation and awareness and solving world cyber problems. We work in areas like uh, space, where we actually have a presentation from one of our uh, fellow colleagues in the Aerospace Village today, um, as well as areas like smart city technology like ICS and K-12, so being the future of the cyber workforce. Um, our presentation today is about the electronic ballot return standards and guidelines titled The Future of Voting. Um, I wanna start off by talking a little bit about um, who we are, uh, what the program is, and kind of how we fit into this whole picture. Um, I want to start off by acknowledging that uh, Secure the Vote is a nonpartisan, multi-agency, uh, multi-policy group that's, that kind of goes after a layered challenge. Um, a lot of the different things out there with groups like uh, EAC, CISO, CIS, the Election Security ISAC, even groups like Verified Voting, MIT, the Alliance for Security and Democracy, all tackle di different aspects of our election security problem in the U.S. Um, and the combination of all of these has led to a brilliant ecosystem in the United States that allows us for us to be able to publish and listen to and advocate for different policy standards, guidelines, whether it be at the federal or state and local levels. Um, and a lot of our focus has primarily been on the ways that we can identify different gaps in critical infrastructure related to elections. So the first gap that we've really identified that we really want to talk about, the reason why we're here today again, is all about this gap where security exists in the conversation of election technology. Um, security traditionally over this past, you know, four or five years has become an even heightened level uh, of focus in the world of election security. Um, so we're not gonna say that we're gonna become the new experts, but the biggest thing for us is all about identifying the, the critical piece of the future of voting technology. And what it means is that we've identified that security, cybersecurity specifically, is a barrier to the future of election technology. Um, and what that looks like is that if people with disabilities or overseas voters or even the everyday person who might have an emergency come up and they can't get to um, their mail ballot or in-person voting, um, that there's more and more calls, especially after the pandemic, that people want to do this. Um, but the biggest thing the community agrees is that security is an issue and is a barrier to the future of where these technologies can go. And that's why we're interested in the conversation today. Um, a little more background on us and how we've kind of learned more about this space and why. Um, our program was started in the middle of 2018, uh, specifically to work on helping address security issues for overseas voters. Um, since then, we've participated in reviewing post-election logs and got feedback from jurisdictions in 10 pilots involving the use of mobile and online voting between 2019 and 2020. Um, and like all critics of online social mobile voting, in every single pilot, we saw the need for enhancement of these technologies. Um, we also saw that there was also increased demand of the pilots we worked in there was at least two to one, if in some cases three to one, and more demand for more places to use it. But the number one reason people chose not to was because of security concerns. Um, so the more we try and understand these technologies and find and understand the different things that address the gap between where we are today, where we are tomorrow, consistently between election officials, the security community, and the academic community, we consistently see that these not only these technologies not going away, but the desire for them is growing. And to go back to the beginning, security is still a barrier. So, ready? And through those pilots, some of the things that we have seen um, that, that are part of that core security problem are critical need for end-to-end -end verification of votes that maintains the secrecy of the ballot, critical need for common standards around voter verification procedures and policies, Again, there's really no, no federally mandated or even state mandated requirements around these newer technologies. And so um, there is a, a need for common standards around voter information privacy procedures as well. Um, and also one of the biggest concerns is that vulnerability of um, the voters devices that may have, um, may have problems on them that, that could uh, hurt the system and interfere with interfere with the vote um, and so we really need to have a system in place and standards in place that these um, that these newer technologies can be held accountable to um, we need pre-election reviews and post-election reviews um, we need the same kind of a level of 
um, guidelines that are offered through the Voluntary Voting System Guidelines, through the EAC. Um, and, and that's really where um, we are working with, uh, we have a working group that, that is looking at these different issues. Um, we continue to look at these issues through, through the pilots. Um, but ultimately, again, we're really working on these questions because even in 2016, there were about 3 million overseas voters who were eligible to vote, but only 6.9% of them actually submitted a ballot. Um, compared to the 72% rate of domestic voters who were eligible to vote. Um, we're doing this because dis if disabled voters had had the same access that um, voters without disabilities had in the 2018 election, we would have seen a rate increase of about 2.35 million additional voters participating in the system. Um, you know, ultimately we live in the 21st century and we shouldn't accept that people living overseas or with disabilities don't vote because they struggle with access to voting centers or because they lack the privacy to do so. And this just, this slide in particular just demonstrates that technology is a part of voting and it is part of our infrastructure. We have email and fax are already continually used by over 31 states. We have web portals that are allowing um, people to return a ballot via a web portal. So the technology exists, it's moving in that direction. Um, again, we just believe that there needs to be a common set of standards and guidelines that can be um, used to help provide those guardrails as this technology develops. When we look back at our progress in voting, one of the biggest things, and this drives home the, for, the, the point that Forrest was making, is we see that most of our legislation around voting has had to do with undoing policy barriers keep, that have kept actively kept people from voting. For the 21st century, what is that gonna look like? It's gonna look like trying to undo the barriers of technology um, and security as, as the things that prohibit people from voting. And so <clears throat> as we look to that future, we want to we want to participate with as many people as possible and collaborate with as many people as possible to figure out what does that future state of voting look like? What is the timeline going to look like in the next 10 to 30 years of legislation that we see, of technological advancements that we see? You know, these are some ideas. These are some of the things that we'd love to see happen. And and we understand the concern about about these <clears throat> these types of technologies taking place today. But the point is is that that it isn't going away. And, um, and so how do we work together? How do we come together to figure out how to make these things happen? Because we believe that with the collective genius of the elections community and of the security community, we can make end-to-end -end voter verification a reality. We can make full-scale citizen audits of these um, a, a, a reality. Um, and so this is what we envision when we see the timeline going forward. Um, and, and what gets us excited about it. You know, there's, with, with the different um, organizations that we've worked with, blockchain has been one of, the, one of the ways that people have been able to, one of the technologies that people have used. Um, is that the right way? Does it complicate things? Or does it make it safer? Um, AWS as, as the um, secure cloud service, is that the right way? Um, these are the kinds of conversations that we need to be having, not just the binary conversation of it shouldn't or it should. The fact is that it is. And so we have to have that conversation about what this looks like moving forward. Um, and, and really that is, um, that's the full, full circle of where we wanted to come to the voting village, which is really that we want feedback. Um, we know so many of you have thought through these things and um, we wanna provide that place where you can offer your advice and your feedback on how we can um, make these things the safest, the most secure, but ultimately the most accessible um, because that's the, that's the whole point of this thing in the, in the first place. Um, and to get really sentimental about voting, I mean, it is truly the bedrock of our representative democracy. If we still have significant barriers to voting, that whole piece, the integrity of that, that institution is in itself is, um, is undermined. And so, um, so we want your feedback. And so if you, uh, if you have thoughts, um, questions about it even, um, please email us at securethevote at cyber-center.org. 
Um, we also will have an RFI that's going to go live this month for solutions to some of these key issues like we talked through um, that are associated with, with mobile or on online voting. voting. Um, so please email us to receive a notification when that goes live if you've got that next brilliant idea of how you think you can tackle a piece of this. Absolutely. Well, a big thanks again to the Voting Village for having us. Um, we want to thank you and, and just reaffirm that this issue is not just a security technology, the security community's issue. Uh, this goes out to all the different election officials, government organizations, nonprofits, and think tanks out there that are all working on this. Um, whether you're against it or for it, there's a component of this that we'll be driving into the future. And if it's going to happen, the best thing we can do is make it as secure as possible. So thank you. Hi, this is Colorado Governor Jared Polis, and I want to thank everyone involved with this effort to secure the vote. Voting is the most sacred right that we have in America. It's the right that protects all of our other rights, which means that we need to do everything that we can to safeguard voting. I'm proud that Colorado has been a national model for voting rights. With our all-mail ballot system that guarantees paper trail for every vote, same-day registration, and so many other protections, we're not only recognized as one of the most secure election states, but one of the top states for voter participation and turnout as well. But we can't rest on our laurels and our past success. We need to continue to meet the challenges of today and tomorrow, which is why I'm proud the one initiative led by the National Cybersecurity Center started right here in Colorado, the Secure the Vote pilot program, where over 4,000 Coloradans used a blockchain-secured mobile voting application to cast their vote. That program from Denver has since expanded to six other states and now includes other technologies to also secure our vote and empower voters. Free and fair elections are the bedrock of democracy, and we need to work together to protect the integrity of our elections together. Thank you for your work on this critical and important initiative to make sure everyone has confidence that their vote will be counted. Good afternoon. My name is Jocelyn Bacaro. I'm the Director of Elections for the City and County of Denver, uh, and I want to thank the National Cybersecurity Center for the invitation to be a part of this video. I am here because COVID-19 has highlighted the need for more options for voters to vote safely and securely, particularly voters with disabilities. Many states already offer some form of electronic delivery and return for some voters, but unfortunately these voting technologies exist without robust standards for safety and security. This crisis has shown why we can't wait. We need all levels of government, security, policy, and technology to join with election officials to establish better standards and guidelines to implement new technology solutions so all voters can vote safely and securely. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Amelia Powers Gardner. I'm the Utah County Clerk Auditor, and I'm here to bring you a challenge, one that I'm confident you can accomplish. As you know, this week we mark an important milestone. Astronauts safely returned to Earth from the space station for the first time aboard a private vessel. Add to that the mere fact that we have put men on the moon, can 3D print internal organs, and there's even emerging technology that can edit DNA. Technology has radically transformed the human experience and solved a great number of our challenges, both large and small. It's time to start finding voting solutions for the 21st century. It's no longer acceptable to suppress votes of an entire demographic or to accept low voter turnout because of weather, natural disasters, or a pandemic. Mobile voting is the future of elections. Upcoming generations demand it, and our current generations need to embrace it as a solution to age-old problems with voting. Our current voting methods require extensive logistics and cost a lot of money while still failing many voters, including those with disabilities, those with lower socioeconomic status, and our men and women serving us in the military. It's time to stop saying it can't be done, and it is time to start finding a way to do mobile voting. The industry needs to create standards that innovators can strive to accomplish and that election administrators like myself can use to judge potential solutions by. Join me in improving the way we do democracy in the 21st century. Thank you.